Hello Few Candy here and welcome back to Solitude. And last time out we did a massive network expansion putting in several custom interchanges. I think my particular favourite of those is obviously the big downtown doorway interchange which I cannot wait to see traffic flowing over and to and from but we will come onto our downtown actually in the not too distant future. But for today, we're actually going to be turning our attention to doing some nice builds along the front side of the main volcano out into the open water. And we're going to be looking at a Patreon suggestion today from Ebo to do a tropical botanical garden. Patreons do get access to my episode planner and therefore get to really input into what builds are coming up and their ideas. So thank you so much for this idea, Ebo. I absolutely love it. So we're going to go and try and build a really nice one today. So we're going to be building out our tropical botanical garden in this area right here. And I've been having a look at a lot of different places on Google Earth, like the Hawaii Tropical Bio Reserve and Garden, uh, other various places across the Caribbean. And there's, I mean, there's a whole ton in Hawaii <laughs> just by itself, but in particular, the Bio Reserve and Garden. And a lot of them seem to have waterfalls as a key feature. And I thought that that would be really nice to see one flowing down the side of the mountain here and coming out into the open water. We've only got the one waterfall at the moment, which is over here, which is very segregated from the main city. So I think it'd be nice to design our botanical garden around that. So that's the first thing that I'm going to be doing today. So blood warnings ahead. <laughs> uh, why am I on the water tool? I don't <laughs> Oh my God. Oh my God. Disaster struck. <laughs> it's more than possible we will get some floods right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull the brush strength down to very, very low. We'll make a reasonably small brush size for this as well. Maybe a little bit larger than that, around the 50 mark. And we're going to start the waterfall from up in this divot because we won't be able to see it from other sides because the top of waterfalls, honestly, in, in city skylines is probably the hardest thing to do. So we're just going to press in. A little kind of pool from where we can start our waterfall here and then I'm actually going to turn this down even more and we're basically going to start pulling out a little bit of a divot to help the water flow down the mountain here so this <laughs> is going to be very interesting to see if this is indeed where the water actually flows so it's going to be a lot of trial and error and definitely quite a lot of flooding. But thankfully, we don't have very much development at the bottom here. So we shouldn't be wiping away <laughs> anything in our city too badly at the moment. We're going to let it flow down. We'll go through these trees. And in fact, actually, let's let's clear these out. We'll go back to our landscaping and just continue to push this down a little bit here. Now, it's going to flow down in quite a sharp waterfall down this hill. But again, if we can just push this in just a little bit. We can kind of tailor how it's going to flow down the mountain and round. So like this, again, let's uh, let's clear out a lot of these trees from the bottom here. In fact, most of them actually for now, so that we've got a little bit of space to design our gardens. Then we'll go back in and put obviously quite a lot of trees for this <laughs> around the gardens. But we'll be more specific in kind of how we're selecting our foliage types so that it looks like a very designed, purposeful garden. We're going to have that flowing down like that, and then we do want to continue it out under this road. I'm wondering, actually, it's probably coming out at not the perfect angle for what I want here. So let's just get rid of that. We'll speed this back out. Like I said, lots of trial and error <laughs> for this one. And then we'll go back into our push-pull tools and just pull this out. Coming out into the ocean round about here, I think. Now, in order to make a nice ocean end as well, we're going to have to terraform this out a bit we're gonna have a ton of rocks around this too and have to break this road for the moment uh, which isn't too much of a problem we've only really got the electricity supply and a bit of industrial buildings down here so they might complain for a second while they're unconnected but they will be reconnected and it will all be fine so we're going to place it in a water source at the top and we're going to see how the water flows down the hill now this is going to go down to the lowest capacity possible <laughs> for this. So we're going to place that in like that. We're on pause, so it's all good. We'll place it in over our hole there. And then we're going to just drag this down. And like at the moment, that looks like it's spilling out all over the mountains, but it won't. It will flow down the hill. I'm pretty confident in that. I have tested this and it came out sort of all right. So we'll see how that goes. We need to obviously do a lot of smoothing around where the water source is coming, but let's put it on fast speed and see how this flows down the hill like this. I 
Okay, so I'm actually not too, <laughs> too disappointed with that. It's actually really not too bad at all. There are a few points that we do need to fix here. So we're going to go back into landscaping and like here where it's just spilling out over the top there, we're just going to push this in a little bit further to try and control that flow of the water down here. And there we go. You see, we've got rid of some of those kind of stringy bits of water that were falling outside of the area that we really wanted them to. Same goes for here. We might need to make it a tad wider as we come down this super, super steep bit. And like this little bit here definitely needs to be pushed in just a tiny bit more. And I'm just really lightly clicking on the mouse. I'm not doing anything too heavy until it goes in the direction that we want. So like that. Let's push it back a little bit further here. There we go. We're getting there. We're getting there. Is that going to stop this little bit here? And what we can do with this is we can place in a ton of rocks to kind of make it feel a little bit river rapidly almost um, as it comes down this hill and particularly around the waterfall because waterfalls can be incredibly difficult to make look nice, frankly, in city skylines. So we'll see how we go. I've no, <laughs> no idea what the water's doing now. Uh, interesting. Yeah, so we've got this tiny bit here. We just need to push that back a little bit. You can even go to a smaller brush size to this to get a bit more control over what we're doing here. Yeah, it's just spilling out a little bit over the side here, which I don't want. That's better. That's better. <laughs> There's really a bit of trial and error to get this right. So I'll keep going down this until we're sorted and all of our water is flowing nicely down our river. Again, we've got another point here where we probably need to go a little bit lower and just push it down a little bit more to keep the water controlled and within our gully there. So yeah, there we go. A little bit of touching up here and there and our water is now nicely contained within our gully. I've reconnected this road as well, which actually flows pretty nicely over it. I mean, if there was a storm and there was heavy rainfall, I probably wouldn't want to drive over this bridge. In fact, <laughs> I mean, that's getting nervily close. <laughs> and some of these like sort of rapids of water come down the mountain. But yeah, there we go. It's in. It's in. I think that's a real life tropical hazard, really, isn't it? And as you can see, some of the ruined texture is now disappearing where the water was overflowing. So that will all go in time. But obviously we're left with these kind of really ugly banks around our waterfall, which doesn't look good. <laughs> doesn't look good. But we can do some detailing to make this look a lot better. And if we use these surface rocks from the workshop, you can find them in the asset list. These are great ways to turn some of these sections into like rocky river rapids almost. Now, these do affect the water flow, so we may get, again, <laughs> some more flooding as we add these in. But you can see, if we add these in around the waterfall like this, you can see it through the water, which, number one, looks really, really cool. And we definitely want some, like, sticking up through the water like that. But, yeah, we start to build up a much more natural-looking landscape than having these hard green banks so I'm going to go ahead and do this now and decorate up the edges of our waterfall. We're going to be coming in with the botanical garden and bringing in bridges across some of the bottom of these waterfall areas so people can just like stand and admire the water flowing down the mountain. But we'll get the rocks in first and we'll make this look nice and then we'll come back to design our botanical garden main entrance area.
So there we have it. And I think it looks a hell of a lot better like this. You just go in and have a little look close up. It really does feel quite natural, I think, and particularly when you bring in the sort of jungle overgrowth all around it. I'm really liking how this looks. A few little bushes almost right down into the water in places. Lots of the rocks sticking up through. Had to use some of the more modular rocks, the larger ones, to sink down into the ground to create some of these like bumps out in the terrain here because some of these rocks just weren't big enough to show through based on how deep our trench was. But yeah, really, really liking how this looks. Kind of top-down view going down here. I think it's going to be super cool with the pathways running across it and viewpoints and things like that for guests as well. So before we come on to the main botanical garden entrance, I do want to talk a little bit about transport. Now we have got one ferry stop, which is not in use at the moment, over here. I would like to add ferry access out to here. Now we have got trams, of course, that are running along this road and I've extended the tram network up just using Network Multitool nicely alongside our main kind of semi-highway, but not highway, <laughs> road that's running around the coastline over here too. So I'm, yeah, I'm going to bring in ferries. And I think instead of using the tram ferry hub for this like we did last time, although we will be bringing in trams to it, we'll do it a little differently and we will just use the regular ferry stop for this. But let's get in some keys first because I think that's going to make the most sense and be the best thing for the landscape here, particularly because we've got that green cliff texture that will show through. So we're just going to use the simple seawall fenceless for this. I'm going to turn off collision as well so we don't lose our lovely rock detailing over this end. And we're just going to bring out a very simple keyed area out here. So I want this bit to go straight. I'm going to turn off snap to angle for this. So it may be a little bit more jarring. We can sort out the waterfront in a second. And then we're just going to curve it back in like we did last time, essentially, just so it's a very, very small keyed area specifically for our ferry stop here so let's go ahead and grab that and we'll put that right in the center here and that is way too high off the ground as we can tell from this so let's lower these all down so we'll grab all of the nodes on our key here like that and the ferry stop and we're just going to lower this down until a point that we're happy with the height for it i definitely don't want people flying off the ferry <laughs> I'm thinking like something like that would be a bit more appropriate here. And then let's actually just raise back up our key slightly. Let's just grab our key nose and raise that back up slightly. So that's nicely in line with the ferry stop there. I don't want the concrete showing through the nice wooden panelling. So that, that'll do nicely. And then we'll just do a tiny bit of terraforming just to push this back out against the key so that that sand isn't showing through at the bottom there just like that and then hopefully that's smooth enough coming up under the key i don't mind the bit of sand there we can have a few little small rocks i'd suggest just out on this side to help kind of blend in that side there and also because we've got rocks over here that kind of makes sense to me let's go ahead and clear out the trees from this little area here because we've got some bumpy terrain <laughs> to work with for sure so I'm actually thinking what I will do for this is a slightly layered approach and let's just grab terraforming tool. So this is flat up to the top here. So that's good news. Let's go back into our keys and let's grab the tiered seawall with stairs. And we're just going to put in a really small section along this road here. And if we grab that, we can move that in a little bit closer just so it lines up with the edge of the road there. And hopefully people will be able to walk down that that feels okay to me i think then we'll grab our road here and we'll bring this out and we're just going to very simply connect that into this road i'll trim the tram line back for now and then we're going to bring out the tram road at the top of this key wall here so that people can walk down from the tram onto the ferry via the stairs there i think i'm actually going to use a pedestrian road with tram tracks for this i feel like that might look quite nice Let's grab that again and we'll just move it up as close as we can to this key here and make sure everything is nice and level with it. So like that will do nicely. And we're actually just going to connect this into this road this side and we can extend that key round as well just to detail that area a little bit better. And then let's just connect in our tram lines like that. And then that gives us a very nice simple tram stop here, turn around that they can go back out in both directions. 
and a nice little pedestrian bit of road along here too. And then we have our key in as well as an extension. We just want to lower this down a little bit so it's more in line and potentially pull it back. We can actually then go in and use a bit of no control on this because it's a little bit wide at the end here. So let's go into more options. We're going to stretch it to make it a little bit narrower at the end here. And then we should be able to grab move it and move it a little bit closer up to the edge. Let's just go back, make that slightly smaller. And then that'll do nicely for there and it won't block the pavement in any way, which is exactly what we want. And we need a little bit of detailing around it to cover that up. But that in general looks all right for our little tram stop there. Now to get ferries working, of course, we do need the ferry depot as well. Now I'm not ready to place this in. <laughs> so this is going to be a strategic tactical placing in and we're going to ignore it. <laughs> is what we're going to do for now. So I'm just going to place it there and it absolutely will not be staying there. <laughs> and then we can go ahead and put in our ferry lines. OK, so we've got our little ferries in. I've gone for this model. I'm not too sure. I might change my mind, <laughs> but they look kind of cute. If we come into Bob, we can actually remove the nautical markers from the ferry lines. I know a lot of people have asked in the past how you can do that. That is one way with the magical Bob that we love so much. <laughs> so useful for everything. And then we don't get those ridiculous boys going all the way around the bay here, which I don't really want. So yeah, there we go. We've now got our ferries in. I have also brought the tram line up to here. So that's now stopping here on the pedestrian road. So that will be a nice little kind of transport conversion area in front of our main big park. Now, one other thing I do want to bring in just before we start as well is a hotel. I'm thinking it would be kind of cool to have the roadside motel out here. And just here, when we come off these bridges, I think it would be a nice spot. So it's just right up against the main road, going into the little motel here. Now, I probably won't be able to fulfil any of these requirements, so it's already got nature. Hopefully it will get sightseeing as well from the big park that we put here. And we could potentially put a few little shops around this area, which I think we will do when we come onto the detailing later on. But it's definitely not going to be 100% rating. So, yeah, we'll come back to that. But also the other thing is we do need a name for our hotel chain, which I have failed to name. So please let me know your suggestions in the comments and we'll give our Solitude Hotel chain a really nice name on a future episode. So coming on to our main park area and what I would like to use as the main park gate is the Nature Reserve main gate. It says National Park on it. I feel like it's just got <laughs> to be this. No question about it. So. Let's actually grab this and we're going to move it slightly further back away from the road here. And yeah, I would like it this end so it's close to the transport options. I think it would be the most appropriate. And then what we're going to do is bring out a car parking network in front of it. So we use parking lot roads for this. And we'll bring out a main road like that. And then I want just like a relatively small car park in here. Nothing major. Kind of want to encourage people to use public transit to get here rather than driving, <laughs> ultimately. So we'll bring this in like this. We'll just join it up to the road very slightly there. May come in with a bit of surface painter afterwards just to get rid of some of that concrete in between the road and it. And then I think we'll just position this right at the end here. Uh, we need to connect that in, of course. And then let's use a little bit of node controller here just to kind of play with this a little bit to make it a little bit more square off. However, that seems to have completely ruined it. <laughs> and we've now got grass on the road. OK, so like that isn't too bad. And they can kind of bend in, gives us slightly more car parking options in this little space here. Now we do then just want to check that all of these nodes around here are the same height. Let's level them all off to the road like that. We have got an electricity pile on here as well. So let's actually just grab nodes here. We'll drag that off just to the side that is not going over that main entrance there. And then for spaces, we definitely want some disabled spaces right up the front close to it. So we'll put those in like that and then we'll fill in the rest of it with just regular car parking spaces like that. So it's not a massive car park, but I think it's big enough for what we need here. And then let's just grab this entrance again. I'm actually going to place it right here. I'm going to hope that that is connected nicely. Sometimes parks can be a little bit finicky with that. So we'll see how we go. And then, of course, let's get our park area in here. Let's extend this out over the main entrance and then all the way up over this entire area here. 
it's going to be really quite a large park. <laughs> um, most of it will be nature trails with little interest points and lookout points and things to do along the way so that we've got sims walking around the entire complex. But we are going to add in some feature buildings, of course, as well, because it is a botanical garden. So I think it needs some greenhouses. It needs some beautifully designed flower beds. And the main thing that I was thinking is actually like quite a large plaza with an old house around it around here. So let's just go into terraforming tools. We're going to get a brush size and we're going to smooth off a little bit of a larger area here. We can have some cliff face in this area. I'm not too concerned about that. That's fine. I think we can help to blend that in and detail that in. And then I'm actually up here going to also terraform out another space somewhat like this. Now we will need to go around and do some smoothing around the top here to make things blend in a little bit easier. So I've got such a such a sharp cliff up this side. So what I am thinking for a feature area here is we're going to bring this out straight like this. We've got a little bit more room to play with now, which is good news. Let's go back a little bit further. We'll come out 100 units either side by 80. Like that to create a nice uniform pattern. We can do some flower bed detailing and things that would be appropriate for a botanical garden in the middle there too. And then in terms of the main asset I want to put here, I'm actually thinking I'm going to use the monkey palace because I think this makes a really nice kind of feature asset here. It does have the zoo sign on it, <laughs> which I don't like. So we're going to go to Bob. We're going to go zoo sign. And we're going to lower the probability of this until it disappears. So if we do 50%, let's click tick. Now, if we come in to move it and we reset the object, yeah, if you keep resetting it, it'll kind of come with a version without, version with, version without. So... Yeah, we can pick and choose whether we want to have that zoo sign in here. So for this, I definitely don't. Because I feel like this then looks like a kind of point of interest that you might find in a botanical garden. So I feel like that is a nice little feature to have here. We've also got things like the bird cage, which could be pretty cool as well. And I'm wondering if we actually have that by the entranceway on the car park here, so people can come and see that from this side. Again. I'm not opposed to that at all. But what we could do here again is with Bob, let's go to the zoo sign. This one, let's lower the probability down to 50%. Click tick there. And then, yeah, we do just need to come into move it and reset it until we get a version without that zoo sign like that. Then that could be quite a nice little feature up against the park car park. So you come in, you've got the national park sign, you've actually got a bird cage to come and look at there before you even head on into the park. Now in Nature Reserve, we do also now have the Nature Reserve Museum, which I would really, really very much like to incorporate. This is kind of part of the visitor's centre, I'd say, so somewhere out this side. So let's boil that path back just a little bit and we'll have this right outside the front, like so, which I think is a really, really nice kind of entry feature. As soon as you enter the National Park, you've got the visitor centre down here. And we're certainly going to want cafes and the such like. And I think, again, I am actually going to use zoo assets for this. So we're going to grab the Zoo Cafe and put this in next door. Let's just move it back a little bit and we can do some extension to it and some detailing around that, along with the Zoo restrooms, which we'll put in like that, I think, next to it. And again, we've got the Zoo side on this. So let's go into here, Zoo sign, down to 50-ish percent. We'll do fine. And actually, that's already been removed. So we're not seeing those silly Zoo sides when we're not actually technically in a zoo. And then other assets we could incorporate into this. So we have got the amphibian house. This could have been a nice entrance way for this as well, although the zoo sign is incorporated into that. So there's no way of getting rid of it, which is why I decided actually to go for Monkey Palace instead. But that's another possibility you could bring in. And we've got the Tarsia house here too, which I do also quite like. So I'm thinking I might bring this back slightly further off, kind of around the back here somewhere. So let's go back into our paths. We'll find Nature Reserve. And let's just bring off a, uh, we'll go to freeform for this. And we'll turn off angle snap so we can come out at a slightly irregular angle. We'll go to freeform, have a nice little curve there. Let's turn back on angle and we'll come out straight like this. And then that's where we can place our Tarsia house. So again, it's just encouraging guests to walk around to different areas to see different features. But this will be our main kind of open feature garden here. 
So they can either choose to go off into the fancy gardens and look at a few features here, or choose to go this way and into the nature trails, which will take them up and over our waterfall area, in and around the jungle to various different feature points is what I'm thinking for this. I think we'll do amusement park path for it a little bit further here, so it's a nice, solid, consistent entrance way. So let's just grab a smaller section like this and then we'll convert it into the nature reserve path here. So I'm going to bring that out and that did not work. <laughs> so let's go back and redo that. So I'm going to bring that out a little bit and then we are going to go to a raised section here. We're going to start to bring it up and over this rocky waterfall. Now I love the nature reserve path for this because it feels very, very natural and blended in. We're obviously going to have an interesting time getting over some of these rocks. Now, I don't mind if they poke through the path a tiny bit. I'm not too bothered about that. I think that feels relatively natural. But if we can try and avoid it, then we absolutely will. And then you can see they're already like walking. Let's press play. Actually, we can get our water moving here. They're walking over this really rocky, beautiful landscape is the general idea for this. We'll have a few crossing places with lookouts and various different points of interest when we come to do the detailing in a second. But there is one more asset that I mentioned I would like to put up here. And of course, because we're doing a botanical garden, so we couldn't do this without the actual botanical garden asset, I don't think. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to place that on this hillside up here. And we just need to get a path network up to it that is uh, going to be interesting, to say at least, to get in. So we'll need to work our way up and around. So I think what we will do is come off the end here and this path, the, the amusement park path, conforms to the terrain. So it moves the terrain down as we loop it up and around. So that is what we're going to do here, essentially. Let's bring that out a little bit further and then we're going to loop it round and then up to meet this entrance way like this. And then we can have just some straight sections out the front here, potentially some picnic tables and some picnic areas as well. That people can kind of sit up here and admire the view as well as going into obviously our wonderful botanical greenhouse garden area at the top of the cliff here now, this is clearly way too steep so we do need to sort this out and we can just pull it down in certain locations so that it's not too steep in any one place and make it a little bit smoother as they come up the hill here There's something like that it's not too bad again lots of natural detailing to be had and to be put in around there Okay, so I think it is now time to come on to a bit of detailing in this area. Well, a lot of detail <laughs> in this area. We need to be putting in some wonderful flower beds into our main kind of plaza area around the monkey house here. We're also going to be concentrating quite heavily on different species of plants. So we have got things like the lipstick palm somewhere. We'll do a kind of feature patch of that. Maybe a feature patch of bamboo, the traveller's palm, certainly flowers and different flora all over the place so that it does feel like a botanical garden obviously most of it will be surrounded by our very familiar solitude jungle overgrowth and then of course we need to bring in some little extra lookout points and features as we go up around the nature trails around the waterfall here too and then also a little bit of shopping a bit of commercial and some other detailing around our tram and ferry transport hub out here
there we have it. And I'm really, I'm really, really pleased with how this has turned out. We do have a couple of people using the ferry. There's, yeah, two people waiting. It's very, very few, but they are doing it. And of course, lots and lots of people using the trams, which is great to see. I did also manage to increase the appeal rating of our motel over here by adding in just a couple of offices and all of this commercial obviously helped with that too. So I think if we just give it a quick check, we are at 59%. It's not too bad. It's not perfect, but we are making a little bit of profit from it. So not too bad at all. And I don't want to go overboard in this and try and max that out because frankly, it would ruin the environment around it. So yeah, we just came in and plopped a little bit of commercial here, just a bit of green cities and some cafes, a little market stall if people wanted to pick up snacks and drinks before they head on into the main park here. But yeah, that was really it around here. A couple of rows of shops just along the tram road out here too. Then as we head on into the park, I decided to actually turn around the birdcage so that people would have to pay <laughs> to get in here, but you can still have a bit of a view from it from the car park, which I quite like. But then you come on into the main entrance and everything is very, very shady around most of the paths. <laughs> um, the first person perspectives are really, really quite nice. Obviously, we did fill out the zoo cafe here with a few little extra tables and some shade as well for that with the toilets next to it. I think that came out pretty nice and then came in and did our big fancy gardens in here. So I tried to keep it to flora that I've been putting in around Solitude. We haven't got many of the bright colourful flowers yet, but really enjoying these kind of palms and ferns mixed in vibe with these extra little plants, which I've no idea what they're called, so I won't pretend. <laughs> Lined up with a few cypress trees around the edge. I think this plaza has come out pretty nicely indeed. I also did last minute actually add in the biodome because I'd wanted to put this into this build and I completely forgot about it, I'll be honest. I'm actually kind of pleased with how it sits in here, with the pathways going round to multiple sides. And also next to, of course, the tropical garden as well, which was another asset I did include in the back here too, the little flower bed outside. So you kind of maintain that botanical tropical garden feel as you come out the back here. So lots to do and see around the bottom. And then up at the actual botanical garden, <laughs> we put in a statue and a couple of fountains at the back here, along with a little orange grove and some banana trees around it and a little bit of brush tool to kind of rough up the surface around it to make it feel like people can walk around and not too intimidated by all the grass. Also added in a few little picnic benches just up here as well as in a few other places around the nature trail path which I think has come out pretty nicely. There's a couple of little viewpoints like here they're probably blocked a little bit too much by the trees but at least you can kind of hang out right in the middle of the dense jungle overgrowth there. We've got our lipstick palm jungle here with a bit of signage to indicate what it is, which I yeah quite enjoyed the look of. <laughs> Actually here, something a little bit different with a tower so you can go up and really experience being in the palms yourself if you wanted to. And then of course going up here we've got a lookout point and I've dro dropped in various little cabins and kind of rest points as you go. We get a few little picnic tables up here by the viewing tower. This would get an awesome view, this little tower up here looking down over that bustling river and of course our big bridges running over them and there are people walking around here which is so good to see because yeah the view up here I mean I'd probably stand up here all day if I was coming to this park I'd absolutely love to see this with the waterfall in the background and the rocky river rapids flowing underneath it's uh yeah it turned out pretty cool indeed then much more of the same as we come down here got a toilet block with some more picnic benches added in a little boulder site as well right next to these rocks which I thought was an appropriate place for that again a bit more extra entertainment for the park and we have added in a couple of fire towers as well so one over here and one up the top here felt like that was needed in a big national park with so many trees such as this now in terms of the name of course I've called it Ebo's Botanical Gardens Ebo is a relatively new mod of mine and also a Patreon supporter obviously submitted the idea for this build as well so this is in honour of you, Ebo. Thank you so much for all of your support and thank you for becoming a mod. I really hope you enjoy your botanical garden. But for today, that is going to be it. So if you have enjoyed the episode, likes, comments and shares are greatly appreciated. And please do let me know your name suggestions for that hotel chain in the comments below as well. And we'll name that on a future episode. But that's all from me for now. So thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you again next time. Bye bye.